the, the bio-inspired approach to, uh, to quantum computing is, is really a novel idea in the sense that, uh, that what we are hoping is to learn how to shield um, a large enough system uh, from the environment for long enough to, to do something useful for us. And again, it seems to us from, from recent experiment in, in biochemistry that, that some living systems are able to perform quantum computations at, a, at the room temperature uh, in very noisy, warm and, and, and wet environments, if you like. And they can do this for long enough that it becomes really much more useful than anything they could do classically. So we are hoping to, first of all, be able to understand these phenomena better using our quantum technology. And then once we've understood that, that we could take that over and incorporate it into our own approach. So that means that rather than starting from individual small systems, we can really start from a much larger unit that's capable of, of the full quantum behavior and then integrate that into a network of systems like that. The main difference between this idea and, and what other people are doing is that um, we are focusing on the top-down approach rather than bottom-up approach. So usually people start with a very simple system, uh, a very simple atom where you identify two different levels which you use as your logical bits, zeros and ones. And then once you can control a single atom, then you of course try to bring in another atom as another qubit and so on. It would be a huge break, uh, demonstrating quantum behavior with living systems would definitely be a huge breakthrough. I think the evidence we have at present uh, comes from very crude experimental techniques that are largely classical. And although they do, they are consistent with the underlying interpretation that biological systems are capable of quantum information processing, they are by no means really the ultimate proof of that. So what we are hoping is that by developing techniques where very small quantum systems are capable of coupling to very large quantum systems. So if you take a particle of light, a photon, and if you're able to couple that to one of the molecules that we were discussing before, involving hundreds or, or thousands of atoms, this kind of system would be an ideal one to probe the quantumness of the molecule with a, with a simpler quantum system. And that's the only way to really be sure that something is capable of a full range of, of quantumness, if you like, if you can couple it to another simpler system that you fully understand. Uh, the greatest challenge in making uh, quantum technology a reality is really um, in, in shielding quantum systems from the environment for long enough that they do their computation in the fully coherent quantum mechanical way. Um, there is, of course, a natural limitation because every physical system couples to its environment at a certain rate. And the, the, the biggest issue for us is to be able to do our gates inside our computer much faster than the, the computer itself couples to the environment. Because once the computer has coupled uh, to a sufficient degree to, to its environment, it effectively becomes classical and you can no longer utilize any of the effects like superposition and entanglement that you need for, for computation. So the question, is, uh, the question is, can we maintain quantumness for long enough in an object that has, let's say, 1,000 bits or more uh, in order to do useful computation? All our theoretical investigation tells us that this is possible in principle. I don't think we see any fundamental obstacle but it's still very hard to achieve that in, in practice.